I'm up here to testify about my journey as a mom. For those who don't know, my name is Brianna Hopes. I marry Nehemiah Hopes, and we got married after two months of knowing each other. So that was around two months after my 18th birthday. And then six months after we got married, God gave us a word that to have a baby. And at the time, that wasn't what I wanted. Like, I was young and I wanted to do my own thing, but that's what God wanted, so we followed through and we had hope. I would like to know, I'm not up here because I'm just some great mom that has it all together or some great wife that has it all together. It's not the case at all. I have a lot of issues. My husband has issues. My kids have issues. They tantrum. We have days where they're really bad too. So don't think that we're a family that just has it all together and you know we're just doing some amazing thing. All that is done is really because pastor's guidance and God. I don't know enough to sit here and say that I've done anything. So I just want to make that clear. I will divide this testimony into three sections. What I did, my journey, and what I learned. I'm going to start off with what I did to ease my way into my journey. And these will be more or less tips and tricks I use to function as a mom and key things I feel shaped being a mother easier and ways I discipline my children. So the definition of discipline is the practice of changing, of training people to obey rules or conduct of behavior. What I would like to emphasize is the word practice. Practice means to habitually do something or actually take something on action. And the word actually is in there. Regarding my discipline with my children, we have a couple of foundational rules that we make our kids follow. And that is, they don't change where we're at. <laughs> Sorry. It, that means that it doesn't change where we're at, who's around, or the circumstances. And that is treating people nicely, cleaning up after yourself, and behaving nicely slash having manners. Me and Nehemiah's household is very calm for the most part, so yes, that does play a role. But good and bad is a reflection of us. When Ellie tantrums and she's super emotional, that's a reflection of me. So, you know, you can see that too. I understand their age, so I don't ask them to do anything that they're not capable of. But I observe, and what they are capable of, I hold them to it. So an example of that is making them take their shoes off when they come in the house. No shoes are allowed in the house. And it took a while for them to get it, but every time they walked in the house, it didn't matter where we're at, you're taking off your shoes. And I was very adamant about that with them. And once I realized that they had it down, and once they came to church and they would not only take off their shoes, but put it on the rack nicely, then I realized that because they're capable of that too, I can hold them to it. So that became the rule. When you have kids, you can habit stack your rules. So you're building good habits for them, but you're also teaching them boundaries and lines. When talking to my girls, I'm very honest and very direct with them. I don't really play games in a sense. So if they're doing something wrong and I put them on timeout, I tell them, hey, you're on timeout for this reason, so I'm holding you to this consequence. Even if they're like, oh, like, I don't want to, like, eh. I, I don't care. I said this, and you're going to follow it. And that's what it is. And it's not that I make them do something or they're in trouble for just being a kid. I go based off what they know the rules are.
one thing that I would also like to know is when I discipline them, if I give them a consequence, I hold them to it and I tell them, this is your consequence and you're gonna wait out your consequence until you either get it together or until you're ready to listen. And I know that sounds very harsh because they are young, but at the same time, if kids in hell are going to hell at seven, my daughter's only three and four years shy of that. If I don't do my part and discipline them on foundation and basics, if pastor comes to them and say, hey, you have this issue, they're gonna be like, I'm not listening to you. Like, I don't listen to my mom, why would I listen to you? And so I constantly keep that in my mind, like how I discipline them and how I train them eventually will be a reflection of their relationship with God. When disciplining my kids, I also do show them respect. So it's not just that I'm some authoritative dictator, do what I say or else you're gonna be in trouble. That's not the case. When my daughter asks me, can you get something out of the car, even if I don't want to, I do it. Respect goes both ways. If you are too harsh on your kids, they're gonna basically hate you. But if you show them love too, too much love, then they won't respect you. So you have to have that balance. You have to have the, you know, you're gonna do what I say, but I'm doing this because I love you. And that's something I emphasize to them a lot. Like, I'm not doing this to be mean to you. I'm doing this because I love you and I wanna teach you right and wrong. And I feel like that's part of the reason why, even if it may seem like I'm hard on them, they still miss me when they're at school. Like, they're like, oh, where's mommy? I want mommy. Because I'm not just being mean. And I explain to them, like, hey, you can't do this because this is wrong or this is mean. I don't just be like, do it because I say so. And I'm not perfect. Sometimes it does come out of my mouth. But that is something that I'm working on. One thing that was a really big shift for me as a mom was reminding myself of their age. My daughters are three and four. They're not gonna behave like a teenager. They're not gonna be put together. They're gonna tantrum. They're gonna scream. They're gonna hit me in the face. They're gonna spit and they're gonna do all of that. But it's my job to redirect and train them, hey, this is not okay. So. Hope and Ellie, sometimes they fight. And sometimes I'll kind of just watch and see what happens. But I do tell them like, what you said was really mean. So because of that, you're gonna go take some time and think about it. Or you hit and that was not okay. And because I know you know, this is your consequence and you're gonna be held to it. As me and my husband reflected on things people struggle with today, we crafted discipline to help them with that in the future. So a lot of people don't know how to sit in discomfort when they feel uncomfortable or when they're in, where they're in a tough situation, they can't handle it. So that is why we give our kids time. If you're uncomfortable, that's okay. Sit in it and you'll feel better. Like eventually you will get better. It's not gonna be forever. And that's what I teach my kids. Like, and I'll tell them if another kid hits them and they don't like it, I'll be like, you know what? I see this is really uncomfortable for you and that's okay. I know this hurts, but I'm gonna let you sit in it so you know how to work through it. I can't solve all your problems for you. I can't work everything out for you. So if you just breathe or do what makes you feel better, right, that's appropriate, you will be able to handle it better next time. And I let my kids know this. We also try to craft discipline based off the fruits of the spirit. So like love, gentleness, patience. 
I started really when my daughter Hope was about 10 months. And if she didn't get it, I didn't discipline her because she was too young. But I would intentionally make her wait. Like if she's like, oh, I'm hungry, I would make her wait. And I would try to stretch as long as I could. And I do this now. And with Ellie, she's more emotional. I have the same characteristic. And what God did for me was he put me in a lot of tough situations to grow me. So when she's emotional and we're getting snacks out, I make her be the one to go throw, some, throw them away and clean up after everyone. That may seem harsh, but it's only through going through difficult things where she's gonna learn and grow. My daughter needs to grow. My kids need to grow. After I had Gabriel, for those who have three know, <laughs> three's not easy. So I had to change my mindset in this area. I could not think it was hard. And there would be moments where I would wake up and I would just cry. But I did not allow myself to think it was hard. Today is today. I got to go and conquer today. And that's the end of it. I can't go to Pastor Eugen to parent my kids for me. And same thing with Pastor Steve. And this is why I did a lot of research on my own because I understand that pastors aren't gonna come into my household and discipline my kids for me. Like that's my job. I watched a lot of videos on how to clean and Specifically, things that were tailored to my family. So I had three under three at the time. So I would watch women who had three under three, what they did, their tips and tricks, and I applied what related to our church, and that helped a lot. One thing that I prayed specifically when I first got to the church was how to be a diligent cleaner like beloved Deaconess Janina and beloved Pastor Eugen. I would hear testimonies on how clean they are. And when I would visit beloved Deacon Jeremiah's house, his house was always clean. But that wasn't something I was taught. My mom is not really a cleaner, she's a hustler. So, <laughs> for those who know, know. Um, my mom didn't teach me anything. And that's not an understatement. My mom did not teach me how to dress myself. My mom did not teach me how to clean myself. My mom did not teach me how to cook, how to clean my room. It was do it or it's a problem. And so once I got here, I realized that a lot of my habits and my ways were wrong and I needed to change them quickly. <laughs> my journey started out as a mom at 19 being married to a stranger was completely intense. During my first pregnancy, I was so sick that I was losing weight. And my OBGYN, which is my doctor, told me, hey, like, you have three months to gain 20 pounds. And I actually ended up gaining 50. Once I had hope, I was just so happy to have my body again and have my own version of free that I started like buying a bunch of clothes and thinking like, oh yeah, like this is it. And then I had Ellie. <laughs> and I got pregnant with Ellie a month later. For those of you who know. Having one was easy. Having two was challenging because I can't be the same mom to Ellie that I am to Hope. So everything that I learned with Hope, I had to completely unlearn with Ellie. And they are so night and day that I, I struggled with Ellie. Like, I, I really did. She's very emotional and her tactics were, I had to change. Whereas with Hope, I can go to her or hug her and be like, oh, Hope, like I love you so much. I would do that to Ellie, she'd roll her eyes at me. And I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> like, what did I do to you? But I learned that 
she really loves words of affirmation. So instead of trying to hug her and be like, oh, Ellie, like, I love you, I'll just be like, you know what? You did a good job. And you can see her whole face change. She doesn't like getting her hair done, but when I was doing her hair, she was like, can you make it pretty so daddy could tell me good job, I look so pretty? And I was like, don't cry. When I got pregnant with Gabriel though, oof, after 20 weeks, I completely almost lost mobility to move. And not a lot of people know this. I didn't tell pastors because I wasn't trying to cop out on my job. I just did the best I could when I could, and I worked hard. But with Gabriel, there would be moments where I couldn't get up all day. And that's not me exaggerating. I would crawl, bawling my eyes out to the front door to just get my kids food. And it wasn't like my husband would come home and he would help out, but it wasn't like my husband would really come home and we would tag team, not the case. My husband would come home after a long day, we'd pray, and I'd be up cleaning. When I could, I was cleaning and cooking. When I couldn't, I just, I did the best that I could. And even talking to my OBGYN, I was like, hey, you know, I can't move. And she was like, well, it's only gonna get worse, and we don't know if it's gonna go away. And I'm like, but I have two kids, like, that. I can't take that. And she was like, there's nothing I can do for you. You're pregnant. Like, what are we gonna do? And so, even after I delivered Gabriel, my husband had to pick me up and put me on my feet to stand. And there would be times where I would look at my kids and think like, wow, like, what if I can never really walk again? Every time, like, my kids will tussle on the floor, I had to be like, okay, well, I don't know if I'm gonna have this, right? But I have today, and today's what counts. So I'm not gonna focus on if I can't move or if I won't be able to tussle on the floor with my kids. Like, I'm just gonna do what I can now. And that was my mindset. During this time, God kept me in the back. So for five years, I was just in the back. I was cleaning, serving my husband to the best of my ability. Um, I was in the nursery, and that was very hard for me. You know, even through being pregnant, God showed me I had a lot of insecurity. I had a lot of issues. And because I was in the back, that was almost like magnified. Because when I wanted to come participate during revivals or during worship, or even come out, I was in the room. And you hear a lot of people testify that it's not easy being in the back for a season or for a year. And I would be in the nursery like, boy, you are so lucky. Like, I've been back here for three years, like, you know? But that is what I needed. I needed to be in the back. During my four years of being a parent, I felt very conflicted. I loved being a mom. But then on the other end, I felt like I was being punished because when someone would throw a jab at me or when someone would go after my family, I felt like I was being kicked down when I was already low. I didn't know why God chose this path for me, my husband. I was almost isolated from the young adults, and I was isolated from the youth, so I came in and I felt like I gave my family away and I had nothing, and it took years. I didn't know if I was gonna produce any fruit. I didn't know if it was gonna turn out good, but I just had the mindset like, okay, this is what God wants. If I just do my best, like, even if I just do my best at the very least, like it's gonna be okay. And because of being in the back and because of feeling very unseen, 
by God, which was really pride. I had to fight not getting angry and not throwing fits. And I did sometimes, but majority, I just, I kept my head down. And I did my best to tailor our household to my husband. So my kids have a little more free reign when my husband isn't around. Like, I'll allow them to splash with water on the floor. Sometimes I let them scream and run around. But when dad's around, dad doesn't like it, so we don't do it. My husband um, has different needs, right? So when he's like, hey, babe, you know, I think I have this problem or this toothpaste make my teeth hurt. I change our toothpaste, period. I understand that the church is supposed to serve Jesus. I am the church, I serve my husband. And I'm very lucky, and we are all very lucky for pastors to teach us that. The church serves Jesus. That's how it's supposed to go, period. And even if it's hard, it's a blessing. When God told me to have a baby, it wasn't like he was like, oh yeah, have a baby, and then after you're gonna do this, or you're gonna do that, and my mom is very ambitious. So in that way, I took from her. I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to go to school and do all these things, but God just said, no, have a, have a baby. And for years, God still never even came in and said, hey, this is what you're supposed to do, or this is what I want you to do. And that was, that was very hard for me, especially being in the back. Um, God required me to give up my freedom, my body, my time, my effort. And at 18, if someone tells you, hey, go serve a husband and have kids and be in the house, you're going to be like, what? what is this? Like, no. But very early on, I always paid attention that pastors had fruit. And if they have fruit for whatever, you know, they know what they're talking about. Another thing that I want to emphasize in regards to parenting, we all esteem Pastor Steve and Pastor Eugene because in our discipline, their love for us never changes. How many of us can say that? I can't. We want to be able to discipline our kids and love them at the same time so that way we are not putting them down or we are not hurting them in a way where they can't get up, right? We are their stability. We are their anchor. So even in discipline, we have to help them and tell them like it's hard but I'm so grateful to have you I am so grateful to be your mommy I love being your mom and it's not easy right you want to do your own thing I get it but this is what it is as my babies are big and we're closing that chapter and dropping off my children to pre-K and TK, I realized that everything pastors told me was right. I didn't know if looking back, I was gonna think, oh yeah, I had kids, yay, right? I'm 18, 19, that's not how I'm thinking. But they were right. God took me when I had nothing to give. I came in with baggage. I came in as the person no one wanted and God picked me and then he gave me what I didn't think was possible. I come from a broken household, a mom who's married like four or five times. I didn't believe marriage worked. I didn't believe you can have a dad in a household. But God came in and he gave it to me. And out of ignorance, I was ungrateful. I was in the midst of work and I was thinking like, dang, like 
I'm doing all of the work. Like, what the heck, right? And I'm over here, I'm wiping butt, I'm cleaning, I'm cooking, I'm doing my best to keep my mouth closed, like I'm trying to endure. And Pastor Eugene and Pastor Steve would tell me all the time, you have it so good. And I'm looking at them like, amen, Pastor. (laughs) But it's true. Before God gave me the job, the talent, He gave me a family. He gave me an offering. My kids, my husband, is my offering. I can't make it half home. My husband has to be there with me. And when I didn't have an offering to give, he gave me one. He gave me three. And so my goal as a mom is that if God puts them on the altar and they burn, that it's a familiar fire, and that whatever they offer to God is pleasing, that my husband is pleasing, that my husband makes God look good, and my husband carries the presence of God. Even if that means I have to be in the back, and that's not easy, right? If that makes God happy, I mean, who am I to say no, right? It's gonna happen regardless with or without me at that, right? So it's better for me to just do it. And through doing it, I'm, I'm very grateful. I, I don't deserve what was given. And that's not an understatement. For those who know who I was before, HD photos, um, God gave me everything. He gave me everything. And I was still ungrateful. And in my ignorance, I deeply disrespected God. Me not being grateful is disrespectful. He's given me everything. And instead of serving with the heart of, thank you, God, I was like, well, if you say so, And looking back over those five years, like, it's like, dang, like, you took me who, excuse me, you took me who had nothing to give, who was nobody, less than nobody, damaged, broken, beaten, you name it. And you gave me the opportunity to praise you and to bless you with my family. And so there's a a different level of gratitude that I not only have for God, but for pastors. They didn't have to teach me anything. I know I was probably difficult (laughs) and I could still be but they took the time with our family and they showed me what a parent was and what love was. And I didn't have that ever. And so I'm, I'm really grateful. To the youth and for those who are called to be er- married early and have kids early, Use me as a reference point. Don't do what I did. Don't disrespect God with your thoughts. Don't disrespect God in in your ignorance. That's what I did. When God gives you a spouse, he gives you an offering. That is a blessing. When God gives you children, he gives you an offering. That is a blessing. And you do not want to mess that up. My children and my husband's blood is on my hands. If I don't do right, I can't make it home and be like, oh, God, I'm here. Hey, he's going to be like, "Um, where are your kids? Where is your husband? That's not okay. I, we have no excuse. We have amazing examples. And so as I watch, 
I did my best to apply, and I'm not perfect, right? I'm not a perfect mom, I'm not a perfect wife. I get under my husband's skin sometimes. <laughs> but I do my best not to test the line. And I do my best to just follow what's been told to the best of my ability. And I just hope that as I do, it's what God wants and that he will make the way, even if I don't see it. And when pastors discipline me, if I think it's wrong, then I just go and pray, God, show me. Show me what they're saying, because I don't see it. And they have more fruit than I do. So <laughs> there's, what am I going to do? Um, but as a mother and as a wife, that is what I learned from our beloved pastors. And yeah, amen. Amen.